Good afternoon and thanks for joining us. I'm Judy Simpson. We begin today's program with an important follow-up to some information that we told you about a couple of weeks ago on Across the Fence. Many of you viewers thanked us for our April 17th program on the Emerald Ash Borer. In that program, we explained that the Emerald Ash Borer, or EAB, has been found in all of the states surrounding Vermont, as well as the province of Quebec. Forestry experts say that it is only a matter of time before the EAB is found in Vermont. So they're asking the public to keep an eye out for this tiny invasive and devastating insect. While we showed lots of images of the EAB, we missed the opportunity to share information about ash trees in Vermont and how you can identify them. So today we've once again called on Meredith Whitney. Meredith is the Forest Pest Outreach Coordinator with Vermont's Urban and Community Forestry Program. Thanks so much for joining us again. Thank you. So what is the best way to identify an ash tree? So I would say there are probably three things to look at. Mm -hmm. um, bark, the branching pattern, and the leaves. Okay, so let's get started with the branches. Yeah, so the branches on an ash tree mm -hmm. are opposite of each other. Okay. In general, actually trees are either oppositely or alternately branched. Okay. This photo will highlight how they're exactly opposite each other on the stem. You can think of kind of your arms on a human body. Okay. If you stick them out, they're straight against each other. So ash trees have opposite branches. Um, other trees in Vermont, there are only so many that have opposite branching. So mm -hmm. you can kind of remember it by thinking that maples, ashes, dogwoods, mm -hmm. um, and then a horse chestnut also has opposite branching. Okay. So. And so that the acronym is Mad Horse. <laughs> it, it is, yes. <laughs> and so um, what about the bark of the ash tree? So the bark of the ash tree, well, first we can just think about in winter time, mm -hmm. right, you don't have any leaves. So right. you can look for those opposite branches, but right. you'd also look at the bark, which has these diamond shaped um, ridges. Okay. It's really distinct. Mm -hmm. And as the trees get more mature, those diamond shapes are more pronounced. Okay. A younger tree would have smoother bark. Okay. Well, what about um, there are different kinds of ash trees, correct? There are. Yeah. So in Vermont, we have um, green ash, white ash, and black ash. Mm -hmm. And those different trees will be in different places. All of the ash trees have compound leaves. So that means that what you see in this picture, this whole thing is a leaf with individual leaflets. So it's not just a, a branch with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven leaves on it. Correct. So this whole thing will fall off the tree as a leaf falls off the tree. Okay. Um, the, there will be five to 11 leaflets on an ash tree. And you're likely to see um, green ash is a common street tree. So you'll see green ash leaves, green ash trees on streets. They turn yellow in the winter. Or, I'm sorry, in the fall. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then um, white ash will be in the forest. Green ash also grows in the forest. Um, and black ash trees grow in sort of swampy sites, like in bogs or along streams. Okay. Now, does the emerald ash borer like all ash trees? It does. It does eat all of them. Mm -hmm. So that's why there's a problem. <laughs> Absolutely. And so um, tell me a little bit again. Let, uh, first thing to look for, branches of the tree, they're completely opposite, exactly opposite mm -hmm. on, the, on the branch. Yeah, not just the branches, but also those leaflets. If you remember um, on the compound leaf, each leaflet is across each other oppositely. Mm -hmm. Okay, and um, what do we know about how many ash trees are in Vermont, do we know? We, we're always looking. Mm -hmm. um, many towns are doing inventories of their public ash trees so that they'll know when emerald ash borer comes, how many trees might need to be removed or taken care of, um, replanted, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. And so the emerald ash borer is fatal to a tree? It is totally fatal to a tree, yes. And so what are some of the signs that there's an emerald ash borer in the neighborhood? If you look at the tree, you can tell. You will see um, sort of a dieback of those branches. So you might be looking up, seeing is it opposite, is it alternate? Um, you'll notice that branches are dying off, those leaves are going away, and you'll see signs of woodpecker damage. Okay, because the woodpeckers the like the emerald ash borer? They do, yes. The but larvae are a good snack. Yeah, but they're not enough woodpeckers to take care of an infestation if that were to occur. No, unfortunately not. Okay. Now, do ash trees all grow um, in the same grouping? I mean, I know you said that the black are in the boggiest place, but do you have, like, large stands of ash trees, or are they pretty right. dispersed? They, um, I would say, relatively dispersed among mm -hmm. other hardwood trees. 
in Vermont. So maybe you're in a forest with a lot of maple and there will be some ash distributed throughout, also with oaks. Um, but they really are common on the streets in downtowns and in neighborhoods. Um, Montpelier is a place that I, I think of, has a lot of ash trees on their streets, mm -hmm. um, as does like Williston and Middlebury has a few too. And are there look-alike trees? Uh, look-alike tree, I would think the box elder, it's one of the maples, mm -hmm. so it also has those compound leaves and it's an opposite branch, which is really tricky. Um, easy to confuse the two, mm -hmm. but the box elder has maybe three to five leaflets mm -hmm. in the compound leaf, whereas the ash had five to seven. Five to 11. Okay, so the more leaflets in there. Yeah. Okay. Um, and so where can our viewers find more information about um, the emerald ash borer and ash tree IDs? You can um, at vtinvasives.org. You can find information all about the emerald ash borer. Mm -hmm. And we have just added to that website mm -hmm. um, information on ash tree ID. It's right on the home page. Can't miss it. Um, but you can also call 1-866-322-4512 if you think that you've seen an emerald ash borer in a tree or if you have any questions. And you really welcome questions from the public. Absolutely, yeah, okay. I like them. <laughs> All right, well thank you so much. Well across the state preparations are being made for the eventual arrival of the emerald ash borer. Some communities have developed action plans to limit the spread of EAB and to reduce the economic, social, and environmental impacts. Rebecca Gollin tells us how Vermont's capital city has been getting ready. And there. What makes this tree uh, really impressive is its size. Um, Montpelier tree, Parks I'm Director sure and Tree Warden it's, it's Jeff right Bayer spends a lot of time tracking the health of the trees in town. Healthy trees it communicates to others the vibrancy and health of the community. Based on the large and hardy trees lining many of its streets, Montpelier is a very healthy community. So it's right in between the sidewalk and a road. There's very little soil, salt, cars, sidewalk plows. For a tree to get to the size and scale is really unusual, unique, and an incredible amount of time to get to uh, this size. Because of harsh conditions, a lot of street trees only last about five to seven years, according to Bayer. What makes Montpelier's downtown unique is the size and age of many of the trees. Bayer thinks this one is over 50 years old. But that's not the only reason he pays special attention to it. Almost all of our significant downtown trees within the sidewalk areas, the ones that are huge and beautiful, most of them, a really high percentage of our ash trees. Ash trees are popular in many Vermont towns because they're fast growing and one of the few native species that is salt tolerant, an important characteristic for any street tree in Vermont. Bayer estimates that ash makes up about 25% of Montpelier's downtown trees. But those trees are facing a deadly threat. When that comes through, we'll go from this beautiful, graceful canopy to just about a blank slate. That's what we're facing, and I'm sure many other communities are facing with the ash tree. What communities and ash trees are facing is a relentless predator that leaves destruction in its wake. The emerald ash borer is an invasive insect from Asia. It was first introduced out in the Detroit area. And uh, what happened in Michigan was it, it took them a while to really recognize what it was and to, and to figure it out. Though not large in size, the emerald ash borer, or EAB, can overwhelm in numbers. Often spread to new areas on firewood, the signs of an infestation can remain subtle until it's too late. It's hard to, to find it initially when it, when it first comes into an area. Oftentimes you don't see the damage for two or three years until after the insects really become established in a tree or a group of trees. So it's, Paul Frederick uh, is a forester with the Vermont for Department of for Forest, Parks, and Recreation. And he and other foresters around the state the are planning for the arrival of the EAB. It has not yet been identified in Vermont, but has been seen in every surrounding state, as well as Quebec. They found the insect as far as uh, up north as Rensselaer County, which is pretty close to Bennington County in Vermont. So, so we're pretty well surrounded at this point. Yeah, this is, um, so these are all ash. Um, when the insect does arrive, the... Vermont needs to be ready. 
not all ash are killed. We've, they've been able to determine that there are some ash that survive, uh, but 98% of the ash uh, essentially dies in those areas from the infestation eventually. A hardwood with an appealing pattern, ash is used to make products from sporting gear and tools to fine furniture. At about 7% of the standing wood in the state, around 150 million trees, the economic impact of a near total die-off of ash could be enormous, not to mention the cost to communities and homeowners who will have to remove or replace their ash trees. Well, as part of the preparedness plan, you really need to know how many ash trees you have, how vulnerable is your community. Uh, to John Akwalashek uh, is a member of Montpelier's board. Tree Board, a volunteer group that helps maintain downtown trees as well as plan for the future. He took the lead on a preparedness plan for the city. Well, the question is not if, but when. And it's going to happen. So it's important for the community to be prepared for the, for the emerald ash borer's arrival because it will cause havoc with our ash trees. Across the country, there are billions of ash trees that are at stake here, uh, and, and millions have been killed by the emerald ash borer. When I started working on the plan, 19 states were infested. Now it's up to 22. So the emerald ash borer is on the move. The larvae create a gallery right under the bark, as you can see here, and it's a serpentine kind of uh, gallery where they're, they're chewing away and getting larger. As part of the preparedness plan, Aqualashik and others have been conducting an inventory of the ash trees in the area. With this information, they've been able to make recommendations to the city council regarding the potential economic impact of the insect, as well as steps the community can start taking now to brace for that impact. When the emerald ash borer arrives, it can spread quickly throughout the city. And the emerald ash borer will kill the tree. The tree becomes very brittle and becomes dangerous to both cars and people. So it's important that street trees be addressed promptly before they become this kind of brittle tree that can snap and, and fall on, on people or their, or their property. And in the parks, we have the same situation where you have trails and all sorts of ash trees along the trail. So it is, a, it is sort of a, a hazard uh, potential. With, the, with, with these dying ash trees. Montpelier has established a tree nursery with a wide variety of species. For now, those trees are used to replace current downtown trees as they're needed. But the idea is to have a stock of trees ready to replace the town's ash trees when they die. Another way of raising awareness is the Look Up Vermont campaign, where bright purple ribbons and information on ash trees around town encourages community members to keep an eye out for signs of infestation, which often starts at the top of trees. You start seeing some decline and, and die back in the tops of the trees. One of the things that, that's been noticed uh, recently around the Northeast is that you start seeing um, significant amounts of woodpecker activity in those trees, and they'll start to peel off pretty big portions of the bark, trying to get at the insects to feed on the larvae in the, in the tops of the trees. So you'll start to see patches of, of bare bark showing up, and, and that's been a pretty good way of, of actually identifying the insect initially in, in areas. The hope is that an infestation will be spotted early enough to slow the spread, and possibly even give communities the option of using pesticides or other measures to protect some of their most valuable ash trees until the threat passes. But these defenses are expensive and not always effective. For now, the best defense is a strong offense. In Montpelier, I'm Rebecca Gollin with Across the Fence. Well, thanks, Rebecca. Now, a quick update, if you wouldn't mind, Meredith, on one of the key things people should be looking for when they're trying to identify an ash tree. Absolutely. Um, one of the first things to look for would be how the branches are aligned, um, how they're organized on the tree. So ash trees, as well as maples and dogwoods and horse chestnuts, or mad horse, mm -hmm. to remember, um, have opposite branches. So they're exactly opposite each other, as opposed to alternate branches, which some other trees have. Right, and also the leaves? And also the leaves, they're compound, um, which means that 
it looks like there might be five or seven leaves, but it's actually one whole leaf with mm -hmm. five to 11 individual leaflets. Um, and you said that the trees look like what? They, the, my favorite way to identify an ash tree is that they kind of look like a candelabra. So if you see one on the street, especially in winter or mm -hmm. at this time of year, um, they just, they grow in this sort of magical upward formation. And you have a phone number and a website too if people need more information or have questions that they would ask? We do, definitely. Yep. Um, you can go to vtinvasives.org. This will have information on all the invasive species in Vermont as well as some ash tree identification. And if you think that you've seen an emerald ash borer, make sure to call 1-866-322. Excellent. Well, thank you for joining us again. Thank you. That's our program for today. I'll see you again next time on Across the Fence.